Hi, my name is Jess Santos and I'm a landscape and astrophotographer coming to you from my new home state, Arizona. I'm coming at you with three things you might not know about light pollution as well as three tips for photographing in this modern world with light pollution in it. Now what is light pollution? Many of you have heard of land, air, and water pollution, but light is also a pollutant too. Light pollution is the inappropriate or excessive use of artificial light at night. Before I dive into light pollution and tips you may not know about it, I feel it's important to talk to you about the Bortle scale. The Bortle scale is what we use to measure the brightness or quality of the night sky. Now this scale goes all the way from a Bortle 10, which is the brightest cities in the United States, Europe, Asia, pretty much all over the world. Think of it like New York, for example. You can see very few, if any, stars at all at night. A Bortle Zero is an astrophotographer's dream, but in the contiguous United States, a Bortle Zero is very hard to find. This is night so dark, the light of the stars shines so brightly through this darkness that it actually has shadows on the ground. You can literally walk by starlight in a Bortle Zero. Almost 80% of Americans live in a city that falls generally on a Bortle 5 to a Bortle 8 where they can see very few stars at night, let alone the Milky Way. They would have to travel miles, maybe even hundreds of miles outside their city to actually be able to see the stars. This phenomenon is also known as the end of night to a lot of people. Number one, you probably didn't know about light pollution, or maybe you do, but light pollution can immensely impact our natural body rhythms, disrupting our sleep patterns, as well as our internal clock, also known as our circadian rhythm. Now this circadian rhythm guides a number of processes in the body, but I wanna talk to you specifically about melatonin and the production of melatonin. Simply put, melatonin is released when it's dark and inhibited when it's light. Therefore, the growing light at night is inhibiting the melatonin production in our bodies. This depriving of melatonin causes things like sleep deprivation, anxiety, stress, depression, among many other health concerns. Number two, you didn't know about light pollution. So you know when you're out photographing the night sky and you see this yellow-orange halo on the horizon, usually in the direction of a big city, this is known as sky glow. And this sky glow, this form of light pollution, affects the migratory patterns of birds, insects, animals, even marine life. Let's think about the Luxor Hotel in Las Vegas. It's that pyramid one with the giant beam of light coming out the top, that giant beam of light pollution. Well, it attracts thousands upon thousands of insects every single night. Of course, since these insects are a vital source of the food chain, also coming with those insects are birds and bats that feed off these insects at night, literally coming to Las Vegas for the buffet. Well, you might not be thinking that's so bad, right? Because they're getting lots of food. But unfortunately, these birds and bats travel hundreds of miles from their natural habitat to feast on these insects and often don't make it back home from pure exhaustion or losing their way because of their confusion about light. Marine life is also affected by this. Sea turtles use the light of the moon to come back to their home beach to nest and lay their eggs. Now the sky glow is often confused with moonlight, therefore the sea turtles are often lost on this journey. And if you know anything about sea turtles, they return year after year to the beach they were born on. That's all they know. So when they get confused about the moonlight and the direction back to the beach, this can be detrimental to sea turtle population. Number three, that you probably didn't know about light pollution, or maybe you did, is that more light does not equal more safety. Our eyes become more affected and more sensitive to light, especially at night. And so imagine you're standing under a street lamp. 
You can see everything clearly within that circle of light, but you cannot see anything past that light. This is known as light glare, and the light of the street lamp is reflecting off the pavement or dirt or asphalt, whatever you're standing on, back into your eyes, temporarily blinding you. So any predator or obstacle outside this light is immediately concealed. The same goes for security lights. Often they're up high on buildings and they have no shielding. So when they turn on, you can see everything that the light falls on. But imagine if someone were standing right behind that security light, you wouldn't be able to see them. If you hold your hand up to a security light, you can now see everything behind it. But if you take your hand down, you are temporarily blinded by the light glare of this form of light pollution. Now that we've learned a few things about light pollution, let's talk about three tips for photographing the modern world and dealing with light pollution that we see. Tip number one, find dark skies. Now you may be asking how do I find dark skies and I'm going to tell you that, but first ideally we want to photograph in a Bortle Zero. So there's a couple different tools to help you find dark skies. First is a website called Dark Sight Finder and second is an app called Light Pollution Map. Both of these work the same way. They show you in real time light polluted areas. They'll show blotches of color from white, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, gray, black. Ideally, we're looking for black, but like I said, that's a Bortle Zero and very hard to find. So you settle for a gray, blue, or green. Tip number two, consider using a light pollution or night sky filter. My personal favorite is the Coke and Clear Sky Filter, and these filters work by targeting specific wavelengths of light commonly emitted by sodium and mercury vapor street lamps. So cutting out that sky glow or the orange yellow tones in sky glow. You don't always need to use these filters, but they are especially helpful when you can't get out to darker skies. For example, in Death Valley National Park, this often falls on a two to three on the Bortle scale. Therefore, you would not need to use a night sky filter. However, uh, in Joshua Tree National Park, which is an accredited dark sky park, the continuously growing cities outside the park cause a lot of light pollution and this would be a place where a night sky filter would be appropriate. Now you may notice that with a light pollution filter or a night sky filter there is an overall decrease in exposure. This is normal because it is blocking certain wavelengths of light. So to counteract this you want to consider either upping your ISO lengthening your shutter speed or using a wider aperture. Tip number three, consider using natural light sources for your foreground. My personal favorite is going to be surprisingly the sun. This typically happens about 40 minutes before sunrise or 40 minutes after sunset and is commonly referred to as blue hour or twilight. As you can tell if you've seen any of my photographs, that blue hour is my favorite time to shoot my foregrounds because I feel that it offers the most dimension in terms of light as well as beautiful, beautiful colors, especially in the desert. The second natural source of light that you could have probably guessed is the moon. Moon is a great light source for your foregrounds at night, but think of the moon as the sun. It moves in similar patterns, and generally speaking, when the sun is at high noon, we do not want to photograph during the day because it causes harsh contrasts and washed out features. Now, when the moon is close to the horizon, you can actually get enough light to light your foreground, and it's still dark enough that you can see the stars. So this means you can get a single shot with a lit foreground and a beautiful Milky Way. One shot. natural light sources for your foreground is long exposures. These are exposures that are several minutes in length and will depend on your aperture or your ISO. These are most often used when there's no other natural light source available and are the closest to what we see with the naked eye. Thanks so much guys for tuning in. 
I wanted to let you know about our Dark Sky Week. It's Dark Sky Week meetups, and these will be a yearly event. It's just a chance for us as a night photography community or photography community in general, if you've never photographed the night sky, to come out and enjoy each other's company, learn about light pollution, and photograph some pretty incredible dark sky accredited parks. So you can check out the link down below for more information or to register. And I hope to see you out under starry night skies.